Hi all, I'm excited to continue this series on climbing the rating ladder in chess. Today, I'll be showing you what you should be doing to reach the level 1000 on chess.com. It's not an easy feat. Look at this graph. If your rating becomes 1000 on chess.com, this means you're better than 80% of the people who are playing on this platform. Just look at how many people over here that are below 1000 on chess.com. So it's not an easy feat to achieve, folks. So please listen carefully on what I'm going to say in this video because I spend hours and hours in looking at the games, analyzing data patterns that I will be giving you much more specific advice. I'll be showing you, for example, what lower level players are doing, what are their typical mistakes and how 1000 people have solved those issues. And in the end, I will also tell you issues you're facing is a 1000 person so for you to be aware of how you reach the next level so if you're 1000 right now please also listen to me carefully because i will be telling you your typical mistakes in your games again i'm doing it for several reasons personally i'm very much curious about how chess progress functions are there for example certain order of skills that people are progressing towards in their chess life are there, for example, solving certain problems in a specific order, right? Because it's easy to tell people, hey, go and study tactics, right? It's too easy. Everyone is telling you that. And that's obviously important. Tactics are very important. But chess is a beautiful game. It has so many different dimensions and elements. In this series, I'm going to also giving you much more specific advice on different areas of your chess skills. Those four questions will guide us in this series. If you haven't checked my previous video, please go and check it right now. It was about how you can reach 800chess.com. This is the second episode of this series. We are following the same order, the same structure in this one as well. So what are those four questions? I'll be showing you what kind of typical mistakes are happening at the level 800. So you can compare, for example, right? And what are the skills that 1000 ELO players have, for example, that is not present on the below level? And... As I said, what you should be doing, studying to reach the next level. That's much more specific advice. And finally, what are the typical errors at this level? Let's start with this interesting position, folks. I'll be showing you a very interesting position to start up this episode. It's a game between um, 1,000 person with white pieces versus 800 with the black pieces. It's black to move. And can you please tell me whether rook c2 is a good move for black? Congratulations if you say no, because in the actual game, black went rook c2 because he was chasing after that pawn. He was only focusing on his own plan and got mated after rook c8, right? Amazing blunder. Despite being a rook up, black lost the game. And in the last episode, if you remember, I told you this is a very typical mistake, issue that is visible at 800. Blunders are very difficult in chess, right? To overcome. So 800... Players, usually they see mate in one for themselves, but they can make a move and allow a mate for the opponent. So this is the first problem that is starting to be resolved around 1000. Remember, in the last episode, I told you that 800s are able to generate one move threats. In this position, black played knight f4 because he was seeing that he could mate the white king on the next move. But can you see what black has missed? Yes, black is missed that his queen could be captured after knight f4. But white was a below 800 person, so white took the other knight and then got mated with queen g2. This was a very, very typical mistake type at lower levels, right? What we concluded last time was that 800s, they are able to see mate in one threats, they can generate one, but they keep blundering like this, yeah? Because right now those queens were not seeing each other, but the moment the knight moves, things have changed. And this was this still remains to be a very big issue for many people, of course, but especially 800. People can blunder mate is in the first position or just, you know, blunder the queen is in this case. But below 800 person in this case, he was only focusing on this knight on d7 and he didn't notice what has changed. He was also not able to notice, right? Mate in one threats that he was facing himself. That was also a very common problem below 800. So this position really signifies to me what was the typical mistake type below and around 800. And 
you're going to see today how 1,000 people are resolving these problems. Okay? Keep those positions in mind, folks. One more. Remember last game, last episode, I told you that a typical opening problem for around 800 was that people were really, 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 really going for cheap tricks in the opening, like in this case, yeah, Queen H5. Because remember, I told you that 800, they're able to generate one more threat. So he was actually able to see that Queen H5 threatens Queen takes E5. So this was a very common issue, common pattern in the openings around 800. And usually they were rewarded, right? Because at that level, people sometimes miss those threats. And then such mistakes happen. They go here, they take the rook, and they were winning games like this, right? But obviously, Queen H5 is a terrible opening move, right? We shouldn't play the opening stage like this. And we're going to see in this episode how 1000s are resolving these problems, right? One more. One more. Remember last, last episode, I told you 800s, they are sometimes going for material, as in this case, right? Knight on e2, for example, is hanging. Instead of looking deeper, maybe looking for mates, forced mates. Can you please stop the video and find the mate in two for black in this position, which was missed by the, by the black player? Yes, mate in two is this. Bishop a6 check followed by queen d5 check. This was not so easy for 800 players. 800s, as I, you probably remember, yeah? They are able to solve some basic tactical patterns, right? They've already established. For example, that's a beautiful tactical pattern, double attack. And this was already visible around 800, which wasn't there below 800. But here, 1000s are going to resolve these issues as well. You're going to see in this episode how 1000 players are able to also see and execute made in twos. Very important, short but accurate calculations. I'm coming there, but just keep this in mind. This will contrast to today's session, folks. Okay? So, so far, I just told you what are the typical issues below 1000. And now we are proceeding with what 1000chess.com can do, right? Now we're going to talk about the skills that are already established around 1000 that is not so easy to be achieved below 1,000, okay? In this position, for example, a 1,000 person with white pieces, he takes on f6. And you tell me how black should recapture this bishop. Well, in the actual game, they take back with a g-pawn. And 1,000 person can see a good continuation here. Short but accurate calculation, please. What should white do, folks? Congratulations. If you find queen h5 check, followed by queen f7. This means that you're already around 1,000 because they are able to see those mating tools relatively quickly around that level. And they can execute this usually in, um, let's say, with great accuracy, right? Obviously, sometimes they miss these things, but this becomes available for 1,000 ELO person. That is not so easy to do around 800, okay? Keep this in mind. This short calculation will be with us for the entire episode, folks. What else? One more position. It's 1,000 person with the black pieces. And black right now threatens mate in one. So white goes queen e5. And my question is, what should black do in this position? Again, please stop the video and find a short but accurate calculation. Congratulations. If you saw the whole line, everyone can see now t3 check. And that's also good. It means your tactical vision has improved. Right, you can see those double attacks, for example. But after King F1, I guess maybe some players, maybe below 1000, they would only focus on this queen and they would take the queen on E5 instead of mate in, mating the white king with queen and two mate, right? So this is actually an interesting observation that around here people also start to execute mating twos instead of going for material captures. This ability contrasts with this position I just showed you before, right? Remember, 800s, they were chasing after material instead of going for mate in twos, for example, as in this case. But around 1000, people start looking at those mating patterns and the opponent's king, and they don't just stop their calculations after a material win. Their flexibility increases in their calculations. But it's usually only three ply deep. Which means I see one move for myself, one move for the opponent, and one move for myself. 1000s are having a hard time 
in going deeper in those calculations. I'm coming there very, very soon, folks. Here, I'm going to show you a positional calculation that is available to a 1,000 person. They can do it. In this position, it's white to play. And 1,000 person can execute the positional knight e5 because he can calculate that if you take my knight here, I will take back and that will be a fork, right? They can engage in those three ply calculations. Again, one ply is knight e5. The second ply will be knight takes e5. The third ply will be d takes e5. 1,000 can do it and they can see that resulting position and they can evaluate that position accurately. And in this game, black player blunders, white takes back and white wins. Material, nice, right? Again, this is not so available to an 800 person, this kind of short but accurate calculations, right? So this is sort of my hypothesis and observation so far. I think this is really three-ply calculation skill is beginning to emerge around 1000 level. And that might be the first step of real, real world calculations. Okay, so I'm going to show you a very typical 1000 game right now. Please bear with me. Already you can see that opening has improved compared to 800. Remember, 800 was just going e4, e5, queen, h5. Here, you see a better opening stage already, right? And here comes the beautiful part. White player, he's a 1000 person, as I told you. Tactical abilities are improving. Three ply calculation is improving, as you know. In this case, he sees this move, resource, knight e5, knight e5, and then d4, right? It's within reach because it's only three ply deep. But does it work for white? <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. Does that tactic work for white? Please figure this out right now. Does it work or not? Congratulations. If you figured it doesn't work for white because you just need to look one move deeper, right? Check this out. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d4. White players saw this pattern and he, not, he thinks that he will just regain the piece with interest and he misses knight takes e4. This, according to my observations, is a very typical calculation mistake at 1000. That's interesting because it just means that they are able to see three ply deep from here, right? But they fail if there is one more move at the end of that line, right? Their calculation stops here and they miss the fourth ply, so to speak. Interesting observation. And so that's my current hypothesis, folks. So the game goes on like this. I will show you one more interesting position. Black has an extra piece, but instead of developing this bishop with moves like d6, Black keeps playing with the knight over and over again. That's also a typical issue for 1000 players. That opening stage isn't perfect. They are wasting time. And here, look at this. One more mistake. Knight takes e4 allows queen takes g4. And can you stop the video and tell me which threat Black is facing or which threats? is black facing in this position. And what should black do in this position? Congratulations, if you saw queen takes g7 made in one threat because black player missed it in the game. And what should black do? Yes, the only move is f6. I'm stopping the mate. And if you take my root knight, then comes this. Beautiful three ply calculation by the way here for black. Yeah? Black plays f6. He knows that knight cannot be captured because of this, right? In the actual game, black after queen takes g4 didn't see it. He goes rook e8 and white mates with queen takes g7, right? Another typical blunder. Here is my second hypothesis. 1000 person tends to miss the threat if the opponent's last move was a recapture, right? As in this case, or a capture. White queen just captures this knight. So black thinks, oh, this move's only function of this move was, okay, capturing my piece. So he refuses to look deeper. For example, he refuses to see all the threats that is faced after queen takes g4. Of course, people are having tunnel vision at this level, right? They tend to look at only one idea, for example, that they are not seeing the whole board or all the threats that they are facing. Interesting. And here, black goes wrong. But I think it's also very, very interesting that black player refused to develop the queen side with d6. Right? I will come back to it on typical issues that are faced for 1,000 folks. One more game that is very interesting. It's, uh, it's again, both players are here, 1000chess.com, around 1000chess.com. And here again, we see opening stage has improved compared to 800. And white is going for this typical right attack on f7. So we are en ending up in this very theoretical stage. Uh, here, 
that's interesting. Of course, Black uh, doesn't know the theory, goes with G4. Around here, by the way, if you stop the video and find the best move for White. What is the best move? You tell me. F3. Because also, it's interesting, 1000 players, they start to see those double threats nicely. This same pattern was missed by 800 person. I checked so many games, folks. Trust me, I checked many, many games. And this same pattern was missed around 800. But around 1000, they understand that they can create such double threats and they can win material by force. Is in this case, why just won a piece? And here comes a very interesting moment here. Just please bear, bear with me. Queen d4, bishop b3, nice. Rook g8, we are stopping here. What should white do in this position? That's my question. What should white do? Obviously, 1000 person's tactical ability is improved. He can see a potential discover attack. And remember, he's able to generate or engage in three ply calculations. Thus, white goes knight d6 check because he sees that he can capture the rook after that. Takes, bishop takes. So his calculation stops here. But if he looks one more deeper, he can see that the bishop will be captured. So actually white is losing material because of this tactic. That's interesting, right? If he only saw one ply deeper, he would never make this move. But my hypothesis so far is that because he's lacking this ability of looking for ply deep, he's seeing this tactic, he's going for it, and then he misses knight takes g8 at the end of his line, and black is actually gained material as a result, right? So again, I've looked at so many games, folks. So far, this is my, let's say, best hypothesis. Maybe you can challenge me. Maybe you can tell me that you can engage in much deeper calculations. And sometimes you can, of course. But I'm talking about general patterns. By the way, everything I say in this video, we are talking about general patterns. Every person's chess evolution is different, right? So people are having different styles, different preferences, different strengths and weaknesses. But I'm talking about very general trends that I've witnessed as a chess coach so far in this project, okay? So one more position here. Interesting. Now we are talking about seeing the threats. Black in this position equals c5. And please stop the video and tell me what you're seeing and what should white do in this position. Congratulations if you saw c4 is a threat because your bishop is a potentially trappable piece. My hypothesis is that around 1000 people are having issues in seeing the threats around trappable pieces. That's an interesting observation and hypothesis. So here in this case, 1000 level player castles long and 900 level player doesn't see c4 and the game goes on. But of course, if black goes c4, then white is losing the bishop, right? Again, I will be much more particular in this series. I will be talking about blunders, particular blunder patterns, seeing the threat patterns, opening patterns, positional chess patterns, and game patterns. I'm going to give you all these extra insights to help your chess out there, but also, again, to help me personally as a chess coach. So c4 is missed, and this pattern repeats itself, by the way. Uh, for example, I will show you one more position. Again, 1,000 player. Black goes f6. Please stop the video. I will give you four choices. Is it knight c4? Is it knight d3? Is it knight f3? Or is it knight g4? You have four choices. Please avoid the blunder. Congratulations if you avoided knight g4, which was played in the game by a 1000 player. And can you tell me what he has missed? Yes, he's missed that this knight is lacking any squares from here. It's a potentially a trappable piece and black can simply go h5 and the knight will be lost. He's trapped. Again, my hypothesis after checking so many games that people blunder like this around 1000 because they don't perceive, they don't really pay attention to potentially trappable pieces. So what is the lesson? You should be much more aware of those issues that you should really, really place your pieces on squares that they can have freedom to move, right? Again, it's difficult. And I think this is a gradual progress across rating levels. And that's one of my interesting observations in this project. Okay, folks? Um, one more position here. So now we are actually talking about positional chess. I'm going to show you typical issues that are faced by 1000 players. 
Obviously, you, you've seen that they, their overall opening has improved. They are able to, you know, develop their pieces to nice squares, usually compared to 800, but there are still so many issues that is going on. For example, why does he play h3 here, right? It's a game between around 1,000 players again. In this game, please focus how many unnecessary, needless pawn moves in the opening that are taking place for both sides. That's just incredible. Just pay attention. How many pawn moves will happen? Also, exchanges. Exchanges are just blind at this level still. They have no real consideration about, you know, good pieces, bad pieces, the bishop pair, weaknesses in the position, weak king, weak squares, the queen trade. There is no consideration about such factors. Such strategic factors are comp almost completely missing and lacking still at this level. Okay? F5, white makes another pawn move, and black, instead of keeping the tension over here, or maybe taking on e4, he goes f4. Again, at this level, for a long time, keeping the tension will become a huge problem. Like, whenever there's a tension going on here, people want to resolve it, either by taking e4 instantly, or just pushing the pawn. Please look how many pawn moves are happening here. Another pawn move, another pawn move, another pawn move, another pawn move. It's like a joke, right? It's like a joke, like people refuse to develop their armies and making pawn moves. After c6, white takes on c6. Here comes my question to you. I'm testing your positional chess understanding. Black has two choices. I always like such two choice puzzles, by the way, positional puzzles. How should black recapture this pawn on c6? Congratulations if you thought this was the best, because by capturing this way, black is controlling the very important central d5 square with the pawn, right? Instead of doing this, black takes back the knight and gives white this huge outpost on d5, right? <laughs> d5 square has been weakened, but there is no consideration for such factors around 1000. That's my observation and hypothesis so far. Maybe you can challenge me, okay? White goes here, does this, queen 2 We're going to see another exchange, right? Another, instead of keeping the good bishop, white exchanges it for the knight. B4, another pawn move, by the way. B5, another pawn move. You know, I'm showing you this game because it's so strikingly, you know, these are called, let's say, chess crimes, unforced positional strategic errors that are so pervasive around 1000 as well, folks, right? Just check this out. King e2, bishop e7, knight e3. And again, instead of keeping the bishop pair, black takes the knight and gives white all these beautiful light squares on the board. This bishop is really terrible. The white king is still safe on f3. But again, they cannot even keep the tension for a single move. And we are closing to the end, by the way. I'm going to show you even the final moment here. Please stop the video and engage in three-ply calculation for white. Yes, white player, as I told you, is a 1,000 person. And he can engage in mating twos. He can see and execute mating twos, as in this case. So if you also want to reach 1,000, please solve mating two puzzles. They are great. They are great because they are forcing us right to engage in short but accurate calculations. You have to look at your opponent's best reply when solving mate in two puzzles, right? And the ability of short calculations will be so helpful for you in every part of the game, right? So don't forget mate in twos. That's very important. Around 1,000 end games are still an issue. There's a very low likelihood that you reach an end game in your games. It's more frequent than 800 because remember last video. Around 800, it was almost no game that was reaching the end game. Around 1000, you will see more end games, but the skills around typical, the most typical and common, basic, fundamental end game knowledge is also missing around this level. For example, in this position, you tell me what should the Black King do against this check. The best move for Black is King d6, okay? And in fact, black is winning after this move because after king d4, you tell me the next move. h5. And it's, it's white who is in Zugzwang, right? So this Zugzwang pattern means that black king will eventually invade and take all these pawns, right? And black will win the game. But this Zugzwang pattern is not available or at least cannot be seen from afar because here is actually a three-ply calculation. That's interesting, yeah? Black needs to see this move for, for himself, one move for white, and then h5. This, this is actually within reach, as, as you know, right? Three-ply calculation is doable for 1,000. But endgame patterns are missing. Zugzwang patterns are missing. This knowledge, for example. The opposition knowledge might be missing in those endgames. So people lose games like this. In the actual game, black player, believe it or not, in only four seconds, 
he went king f7. He took only four seconds in a rapid game. He had so much time in his clock. He plays his move instantly and gave white king the square. And it's just white who's winning right now because the white king will eventually invade, take all these pawns, and white wins. So it also makes sense around 1000, and if you want to reach 1000, to actually study the most fundamental, the most basic endgame patterns. You don't need 100 endgames right now at this stage, but extremely very, very basic fundamentals should be known. Like the opposition, how to win with an extra pawn, for example, in a king and a pawn endgame. Extremely basic stuff that you can also, because that will help you a lot in your games. That will make the whole process much more efficient if you already know some basic endgames, okay? And finally, very interesting observations I actually made here. I will tell you some chess crimes. Well, I made a chessable course that is titled Chess Crime and Punishment. It's really within my heart to see such positions. In this position, folks, please stop the video and find a good plan for white. It's about plan making in the middle game. It's about positional chess. White has an extra pawn in this position. I want you to look at all the pieces. That's my first hint for you. Look at all the pieces and try to improve a bad piece. Because that's how positional chess usually works. Simple decisions, right? Identifying which piece is terrible and try to improve them step by step. Congratulations if you looked at this knight, terrible spot on h3, and you found the move knight g5. Simple chess, the knight improves, hit the rook, challenges the e-file, plus even looks at this beautiful e6 square, right? That's how simple chess works. You have gradual improvement, but feeling for the pieces is the first step in playing good positional chess. And this is missing at 1000 usually. In the actual game, believe it or not, the white player, 1000 person, played, oh my god, c3, I cannot even look at this move, it's so ugly, and he's burying his own bishop on b2, that bishop is crying after c3, don't you think? These kind of mistakes, positional mistakes, are pervasive around 1000. I will show, I can show you many, many such examples, but just to give you what actually is even worse, just below 1000, that's actually interesting, I will show you even a worse chess crime, there is around 900, because I think there's a gradual progress here, right? Around 900, with the black pieces, instead of going d6, and instead of getting this bishop out, right, this guy, they go bishop d6. Why? Because there was a threat on the pawn on c7, right? So he's solving the problem, the threat, by playing bishop d6. And after bishop takes d6, believe it or not, they take back the c-pawn. Okay, this is just becoming unbearable, right? But that's what happens at this level still, right? The bishop is dead, the pawn structure is terrible, and so you see, compared to this chess crime, this chess crime is actually better, right? <laughs> so compared to the other chess crime, this chess crime is actually a little bit improvement, you might say. But, right, it also shows that there are many, many, many improvement potential for 1000, yeah? There's much progress to be made here compared to what we just seen before. So we'll see, there's lots of room of improvement for positional chess, but I gave you a big hint there. Please look at every single piece in your camp, identify them, and that's the difficult part because people cannot even sometimes identify when a piece is bad, right? But you should really speak to your pieces. Please, speak to your knight. That's a terrible piece. Improve it gradually. Don't do this because the bishop is crying. So what skill does it take? That's my question. Does it take a big skill to identify that this bishop is really crying after c3. But you should already start breathing these things, yeah? This ability of talking to your pieces, and you will see amazing progress in your positional chess if you apply the simple lesson, folks. Let's sum up and reflect on what we've been seeing in this episode so far, folks. 1000chess.com, they have a better vision and safety check compared to 800. Definitely better tactical awareness and pattern recognition. So you should definitely work on these things to reach the next level. And opening play also improves, remember? No single and cheap tricks, but more goal-directed moves. But remember, they are still making so many pawn moves in the opening. There are some crimes going on there, but definitely more order compared to 800s. And interesting observation, my little hypothesis here, three ply calculation starts to develop. They can engage in short, but accurate calculations, right? They can see one move for themselves, one move for the opponent, and then they reply against that move. This is the pillar of real calculation. And if you engage in short but accurate calculations, this will be a very, very important tool in your disposal as a chess player. So that's, I think that's my hypothesis. 
that is around 1000 that th these things are starting to be established so what you should be focusing on to reach 1000 well board vision and safety exercises are still very important remember in the last episode i showed you typical board vision exercises and safety exercises they are still very much relevant you can solve for example puzzles that involve seeing the threat you will see the opponent's move and you will see identify all the threats quickly and figure out because definitely there's a progress here for 1000 players compared to 800 in seeing the threat but i will come back to potential issues later on right keep that in mind what else you should be doing tactical training that's always important tactical pattern recognition but also specifically more like three ply calculation training right for example made in two puzzles are great because made in two puzzles are forcing you to calculate three ply moves with accuracy this way you're also seeing for the best reply for the opponent and you're engaging in real world calculation trust me folks this is the pillar fundamental pillar of real calculation so you cannot go wrong with such exercises you should take time of course because that's a real deep calculation training you should force yourself to look at several moves for yourself also several moves for the opponent against your move right so it's no longer like you know quick other rush kind of you know short uh, short puzzle but also more like real world calculation training and real puzzle that you can take your time maybe give yourself you know 10 to 15 minutes per puzzle and engage in this training very helpful also trust the golden rules in the opening rather than going for cheap tricks right like e45 queen h5 for example avoid those one more tricks because at your level people will start to refute those ideas right 1000 players they are able to see your cheap tricks and they will fend off your attacks and then you will pay for it so trust the principles develop your pieces don't make so many pawn moves and finally we have to talk about the typical errors at 1000 right because this will connect to our next episode we're going to see how 1200 can overcome these problems but also if you're 1000 person listening to me right now please be aware of these issues that you're likely facing and don't forget everyone is different i'm talking about general patterns that i've witnessed after looking at hundreds of games per level right maybe your chess is already a little bit different than what is described here but i'm sure you also identify typical issues in your games okay blunders are an issue of course but more subtle than eight hundred. remember eight hundred are just blundering made in one here blunders are more often you know you are basically not able to see a trappable piece for example you move a knight to a square but the knight has no mobility there and it can be attacked and be trapped for example yeah it's a much more subtle blunder more difficult maybe right or let's say more advanced than the very basic mate and one blunders that we've seen in the lower level right it's that's interesting because threats are often missed if the opponent's last one was a capture remember people are having still trouble in looking at all the threats that they are facing and sometimes they interpret moves in a one-dimensional way hey this move last one was a, just a simple capture so i refuse to look at the threats that it presents to me for example right or three ply calculation is still doable but right whenever it becomes four ply calculation remember the, that puzzle i showed you then people are having issues at this level so it also makes sense to let's say enlarge our calculation base our vision a little bit more to reach the 1200 folks keep that in mind also in the opening people are still making so many pawn moves they're losing time in the opening the concept of time the importance of time in chess hasn't fully established yet at this level finally positional chess crimes remember those beautiful chess crimes i showed you it's mostly about letting down the pieces people are on 1000 they really have a hard time identifying which piece is bad and they sometimes make crazy looking decisions that are actually burying their own pieces so to reach the next level you should already have this habit of speaking to your pieces identifying which piece is good or bad and that's a skill in itself right to identify bad pieces and improve them and you can that's a secret sauce of playing traditional chess simple chess folks and finally mindless exchanges are still present i was surprised actually how long how, you know people need to spend to solve the exchange problem one of the most difficult strategic decisions right exchanges and their long-term ramifications thank you so much for bearing me today folks i hope you learn some useful lessons i hope this video will help you to reach next level in your chess and please come back to this video over and over again in the future if you need it this will be here for you for the future generations actually a little bit of a show off there and if you like this video please give me a like 
so we can reach more people and help their chess. I'm here to help you improve your chess game. It's a very serious business, but I really want to engage in this because I find it personally very interesting and engaging to see those general trends in our chess progress and evolution. That will make me a much better teacher and hopefully that will also make you a great, great chess player in the end. I will catch you in the next video on how we can reach the 1200. Bye-bye.